giving of information and laughs and truth to people somehow benefited them and also benefited you. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so when they would ask me what I wanted to be, everything that I would say that I wanted to be was something that didn't exist. And they would never give me credit for it because I needed to say um, a doctor or a lawyer. lawyer, but that's not what I wanted to be. So your parents, weren't as supportive as you would have hoped because you were wanting to be things when you got older that they had no knowledge of or it didn't exist at the time? No, it, it wasn't that. It, it was, um, I'm saying I'm, <clears throat> I'm almost 100 years old right now, but if we go outside right now, I can run a 4340. Or, or sub. I can do a 416 if I'm Oh, there's Jimmy John's across the street. We can order a sub. <laughs> but um, Oh, you've been on the submarine. That what you sub? So, um, so back then, it was even greater. So you got this guy that all the coaches want to play. Man, Cass, I don't do that. Hold on, because I'm, I'm five foot five in the fifth grade. I've been this high my whole <laughs> life. Like, there was a portion of school where I was one of the big dudes. Like, it just, as soon as everybody caught their growth spurt, I was out of there. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm saying I was a competitive individual. Mm -hmm. My father was an athlete. I can see like, that. Like, like, no, I've been 145 pounds my whole career. That's why I never bothered when they said, you know, cats on drugs. I knew, how you gonna prove that? I'm, <laughs> <laughs> My body is a temple. I've been, I've been the same <laughs> size since I was ten. Like, what do you? Yeah, like I, I, ha, I haven't, ch I haven't changed off this pivot foot. This has always been who I was before stand up or anything. But it was a, um, it was an interesting childhood. I, I, I appreciate my parents, even though um, I couldn't live within the religious frameworks of right. what they had set up. Um, but that was more not wanting to live a double life and not want to embarrass my family. You know what I mean? Because I read where a form of punishment for you is that they would take books because you mentioned you were such a voracious reader. And a form of punishment it was when they would take the books for them because you could read fluently. You, you, you told me how at like three or four years old, you could read, 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 not, not just a, a little child's book, but you could read, read. Well, I'm saying when we when we go to Haiti to do missionary work, understand that my mother and my father, nobody that's there with us speaks French. And, I mean, it speaks Creole and reads French. So I'm in charge of everything from the housing to the cars to the the gardener like I. I'm saying, so I'm not just reading. I'm reading in multiple languages. Like I'm, probably, How old are you I'm probably reading 3000 books a year from the time that I'm eight years old to the time that I'm 12. No, no, no fiction books at all. I'm only reading nonfiction. You could drive at 12. You received a full scholarship to the National Science Academy in Dayton, Ohio. But you failed, so you couldn't become, so you would become ineligible. Why didn't you want to take that opportunity? I didn't see it as an opportunity. When I got in there, all the students were wearing lab coats and it, it seemed very confined and restricted and nobody seemed like they were having fun. It just seemed like everybody was smart. I, I, I didn't want that. That, was, that wasn't what I was signing up for at all. And plus, um, I thought that I was, I, Jesus was my big homie. So you know how you get a story about a dude joined the gang and you get a big homie, right? Mm -hmm. Like at this particular point in my life, I'm, my thought is that the Bible is the greatest book that's ever been written, okay. that it houses the truth, and that it gives you this story of Jesus, and that I'm supposed to be like him. Okay. So I, it's already in my head that as soon as I get 13, I'm leaving. You, you, you at 13, you not only leave like, okay, mom, I'm moving out. You move from Ohio to Florida on your own. You weren't afraid. I mean, you like, did you? No, hold on. Did, hold did you on. not don't, have a, what, don't, so what do So what were you going to do when you got to Florida? Don't say I wasn't afraid. There's no such thing as a human being of not being afraid. Okay. There are certain human beings that understand that being afraid in no way stops you from doing what you got to do. Okay. So um, I, w I was afraid, um, but... I couldn't be that afraid because I knew what had happened with Jesus. I knew how it worked out. 
I, I knew that I wasn't in the wrong with how I was feeling, and I knew that I, I didn't have any bad intentions in it. Right. So I trusted God that it would work out. Why Florida? Um, because I, if you're raised in Ohio, the one thing on your list is, I'm going to get away from snow, <laughs> and I'm going to get as far... I want to go, tell me the place. I literally went to a truck stop and I asked all the truck drivers where they was going. And it was one guy going to California and it was one guy going to Florida. And they told me how long it was going to take. And so that's why I ended up in Miami. Because. How'd I, you get there? You called a bus? Or no, me? I just told you. I was at the truck so, stop. I, so he you let hitchhike? It, I got in. I didn't hitchhike. I got in the back of the dude's 18 wheeler, me and my Rottweiler puppy and my suitcase. <laughs> yeah, because I was, I probably had twenty five hundred dollars on me. Like I, like I was shoveling snow and cutting grass. Like I always had pockets full of money. When did you make the decision that you were gonna leave Ohio and go somewhere? And it ended up being Florida. So, but when did you know that you were leaving Dayton, Ohio, going to Florida? And my father and I's last interaction. Um, Somebody could have not made it. And we both understood that was all bad. What was the disagreement about? Um, if if you say that my family is very religious, let just say I'm not. So anything that I, I'm going to do is not is going to fall out of the guidelines. Right. But I'm not going to let you tell me what I'm going to be, even Especially if what you're saying is wrong. I can't condone wrong. And if I find out that something is wrong and I tell you it's wrong and you don't back me, that's what it is. Even as a young child, you were willing to tell your parents that some of the things that you're saying doesn't coincide with what I've been reading in, in, in the Bible. No, no. Very simply, don't. Don't try to disfellowship me for sexual acts and I'm a virgin. Sorry, God, don't make mistakes. You don't get two times to fuck me over. What do you mean you went to God and he told you I was guilty? <laughs> you just lied on God. So long. That's it. There's no conversation. Deuces. That's so that, what it was. That's when you made the decision. After yes. that conversation right there, you say, no, nah, I, can't, I can't live under this roof. It wasn't a conversation. It was an altercation. In the altercation, I love my father. My father loved me. But we are two men at it. That, it'll never be the same again. You can't sleep comfortably around me. And I can't sleep comfortably around you. How similar are you to your father? No, um, I don't. I don't know. He's a great man. I, I'm, I'm saying because uh, it seems like y'all butt he y'all butted heads. Right, but I'm saying that generally happens with a father son dynamic. It was just that um, religious relationships are always difficult right. in families. They always are. Before it got to the point, because the dynamic, he's father, your son. Before that dynamic, and you step up on his level and you challenge him, you felt it was best for you to leave. No, no, no. I'm not being challenged. I'm being beat to death. Oh, he was abusive. I didn't say that. I said we were in an altercation. Oh, uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. I saw what you did there. I saw what you did there, cat. Yeah. I saw what you did. You was in an altercation. You didn't say you lost. You said you was in an altercation. I in no way gave you the impression that I won anything. I'm the one leaving. I'm out of bounds. This is his house. Right. Yeah, yeah. You so as long as I'm going to be under his roof, you there are certain father. things that I'm going to have to do. Right. And the only way that's going to change is either this or that. Right. And I, I, I'm saying I had two younger brothers. Like, I'm not... I'm not an unreasonable person. Like, I don't have any mental issues whatsoever, despite what they lead people to believe. You know, I make good, pretty good decisions. Were you not? Uh, so how was their relationship with your father? Were you not afraid to leave them? Well, I asked because it it went all the way to the actual department. So it was actually going to be something. Um, 
And when I asked them if they could just make sure that my brothers didn't get separated and what have you, um, they said they couldn't make those type of guarantees, that they weren't really sure what would happen if this went down. And so part of leaving was the hope that it would be okay for them because no, none of them experienced what I experienced. I'm saying I'm the oldest, it's a lot riding on me. I'm supposed to at least religiously hold down the family's name Correct. at this household, right. you know what I mean? How much older are you than the baby and the knee baby? Like a lot older, like 